okay brother so uh i'm very sorry for recording this video late uh i've been having a very long day for the past one week we've been working on a field project that is taking uh, much of my time so uh, i really don't have much time to i know sit down and uh, do other tasks because when i reach home in the evening i have kids all over my uh around me so uh I normally don't have that kind of uh, opportunity to work uh, such task on time. So uh, if I may just uh, give a brief introduction of this project, as you said that uh, this is a network topology that, that, uh, network topology that connects uh, various uh, uh, networks or various cities, almost uh, six cities as you uh, gave them out here and the city is connects to via uh, via one wide area network via one routers so you said that there should be at least 15 one routers of which i included so start from the very basic or from the lower level when you are climbing up so i'll just uh, use one network to explain because uh, there are similar networks based on uh, the, the, the the task requirement that you sent me so we just uh, design a similar network for each city although the configuration or parameters may differ but all in all just a similar network all right so uh as you know these um in every depart i mean in every uh, city we add departments so for for example not actually departments but category of devices or rather let's just say department in short yeah so for example nomadic devices we had uh, ip phones we had uh, in let's say in new york in new york city uh, we had uh, finance and also we had where Wi-Fi devices are, Wi-Fi users. So to uh, to segment these, uh, we need to uh, create VLANs and assign ports VLANs. So for example, you see nomadic devices should be in VLAN 80 with this network. Then when you come to the switch, this interface that connects uh, nomadic devices, it's F f uh, let me just put my cursor there f05 should be in vlan 80 and if i can just put my cursor on the switch you will see it there above that f05 is in vlan 80. so the switch connects this silk switch connects to vlan vlan 80 and vlan 90 where vlan 80 represents uh, nomadic devices with this network VLAN 90 represent um, IP phones, uh, these VLANs, I mean with this network, okay? And you can see this interface was uh, FS, FS 0 slash 11. In fact, if I put my cursor there, you can see FS 0 slash 11, VLAN 90, okay? Okay, so to show... Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Okay, so sorry for that. I was saying that um, to show, to, to demonstrate uh, the configuration on the switch, that indeed we created the VLANs, you just go to the switch and uh, uh -huh. you just say enable command, then config T. After writing config T, you just say do show VLAN and it enter so you can see in these devices we only wanted how many villains will two villains villain 80 and villain 90 and you can just demonstrate that they have been assigned interface as you can see here that villain 90 has that interface while villain 80 has that interface while all other remaining interfaces belongs to the default vlan okay all right so uh in this access layer switch what we did was just to implement vlans 
and trunks. So how do we show trunk? So any interface that connects from the switch, the access switch, to the multi layer switches should be trunks. For, for example, this switch one should, this interface should be trunk. This one should be trunk. And how to show it? You just uh, say show interface trunk and you hit enter do show do show interface int trunk and you hit enter and you will see we have two interfaces as trunks which is this one and this one so if you can just say this way and I come here you can see that is a uh, uh, just a minute if I come there you can see that interface uh, fa zero slash two and this one is fa zero slash one so what we what we did here was just implement trunks and vlans so the same setting applies to all other remaining switches same setting applies to all other remaining switches Although the parameters may be different, maybe here is VLAN 110 and 120, here is 130 and 120 or 230. But the same settings applies in all other switches. Okay, even if you can just go here and say show, show start, and hit enter, enable, show start and hit enter you will see that the first two ports are trunks but f 0 4 is in VLAN 100 and you can see this is VLAN 100 here okay and also other ports which were this one you can see it's in VLAN 220 VLAN 220 okay all right so the same thing that I've done here I did it on all other remaining access layer switches. What we did was just to configure VLANs, assign them to ports, and also configure trunks. So that we are done with access layer. So let's go to distribution layer. So in the distribution layer, what we configure first is trunk between the mat layer switches and the access layer switches. So what we first did here was just trunks. Any interface connecting the mount layer switch to the access layer switches. This one and this one are trunk. So to show that, we just go to the mount layer switch again. And uh, and you say uh, show interface trunk and you see we have trunks implemented here all right so another thing that i want to show here that we implemented is the either channel lscp you can see i wrote it here and how do we demonstrate lscp so to demonstrate lscp you just say uh show uh, either channel and it end so you can see we're using layer to the channel how many ports did we use only three ports and we're using which protocol LCP or you can just say do show either channel summary and you hit enter and now you see all the ports that you are using and all other parameters so this is how to show either channel how, it, how it's working so another thing that we implemented here also was was VLANs so the same way we did VLANs here and here now when we come to the mat layer switch we have to do the uh, the villains that we did here plus the villains that we did here. We, we do them here, both here and here. So 
for example, 80, 90, 100 to 20. Both are here. Both are here. All of them are here and here. And if you can just say show VLAN, you will see all the VLANs that are there. You can see 80, 90, 100, and 220. So that's the third thing that we implemented, we implemented here, VLANs. All right. So uh, another thing that we did here on the multilayer switch, let me just see. But I think those are the code that we did there. Show sure. start. Another thing that we did there, what I can't see, but that's all we did there. So whatever I did here applies to he all other multilayer switches. Remember that the multilayer switches that some the first thing that you do, you make this interface and this interface. And also this interface that connects to a router has trunk because they want to pass multiple VLANs. Then the second thing that you do, you configure either channel, LACP. The first thing you do, you configure VLANs. So after you've configured VLANs, now you are done, we go, we go back to the router. So when we reach to the router, the first thing we do here on the router is to configure uh, what's called inter-VLAN routing. Remember, uh, on the multi-layer switches and the access layer switches, we configured multiple VLANs. So to enable those VLANs to communicate, we have to do inter-VLAN routing. So in inter-VLAN routing, uh, using a router is normally called a router on a stick. So we create sub interfaces and assign them, bind them to VLAN ID and assign them IP address as per the network. So for example, we create a sub interface on this router, then point it to VLAN 80 and assign it this network. We create another sub interface here for VLAN 90 and point it to this VLAN 90 and assign it IP address of this network. The same applies here, here, and all other remaining cases. So to show you that, I just go here. And uh, how do we show VLAN, inter-VLAN routing? You just say show, start. So to, after you say that, so how to show inter-VLAN inter routing? We said we create sub-interfaces. So here are the sub-interfaces that we created, four of them. For VLAN 80, VLAN 90, VLAN 100, and VLAN 220. And you can see they've been assigned network as per what you gave out. And as you can see here, sorry. If you can just see here, these, these, these. Uh, VLAN 80 should be in this network, so this one, you can see it matches and it's, it will act as the default gateway for all the VLAN 80 devices. This sub-interface on the router will act as the default gateway for all the devices in VLAN 80. Same applies to the other remaining sub-interfaces. So what I've done here applies, you can use the same explanation for all other remaining routers. So the first one was interval routing and configuring IP address to the router's interfaces. So the second one is all about um, a routing protocol. So the routing protocol that we did here was called OSPF. And uh, we did two areas, multi-area of OSPF. So you can say you did the multi-area OSPF in your network to show uh, how you better understood the project. So you can see we had advertised all the connected networks, all the four networks plus the one that connects to the one router. So this is the OSPF configuration. So yeah, that's how you show it. Just show start, then scroll until you see route OSPF. These are OSPF 
configuration so that's number two our SPF is normally used to route our uh, request the destination so it's a routing protocol that is used to uh, guide our packets move from destination uh, across multiple paths I mean I mean across the multiple paths yeah so that's always PF. So the third thing that we did here was DCP server. <clears throat> Remember, in this network, we didn't have a DCP server. So this router here act acted as the DCP server for all other <clears throat> departments. So how do we show uh, DCP server configuration? For DCP server configuration, you can see we have four pools. One pool for voice, another one for nomadic devices, another one for finance, and for Wi-Fi. So for voice, for example, you just put the parameters, for example, the network here, which is this one, then the default router, which is the IP address or the sub-interface that we created on the router here. Then option 150 is used for VoIP, the DNS server. The same applies to the nomadic finance and the Wi-Fi. All right. So the last thing that we did here, let me check. Uh huh. Just a minute. Uh huh. Yeah. So let's just go back. Just let's just go up. So we've done everything on the router. I configured three main things, but I think I'm forgetting something here. What is it? Dial peer ops. It's all about a, te a telephony service. So I, being that we have IP phone, so we must configure telephony service. So we just say telephony service. Then how many phones do we have in our network? We say 10. Then each phone to our directory number. So that maximum directory number to be number 10. Then IP source, this is the default gateway of the VoIP VLAN and assign a phone's number from number 1 to number 10. So these are the numbers that the phones will have from, for example, 101, 102, etc, etc. Okay, so I close that one. So we, we go up here on the one router. So basically in the, on the one router, what we did was just to configure IP address and configure OSPF only in all the 15 one routers so if you can just say enable show start it's only a speed that you could configure in all the one routers plus the IP addresses only only SPF and the IP addresses so that's all about this project in case you have any problem can you just let me know a description that I've used to describe from this router going down applies in every network or in every city. Thank you so much.